What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because the Tiguan, believe it or not, actually has third row availability, which you can't say the same for when it comes to the CRV or the RAV4. Also, you get a four-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. And again, you can't say the same for the CRV and the RAV4 because traditionally it's three years, 36,000 miles. So that is pretty cool as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing itself. There will be a few different trim levels for the 2023 Tiguan. First one being the S starting at $26,950. SE for $30,580. SE R-Line Black for $33,310, which by the way is the one we have today. Then there is the SEL R-Line for $37,680. So all of these trim levels with the exception of that last one come standard with front wheel drive. Last one comes standard with all wheel drive, but you can add all wheel drive to any of those other trims if you wanted to do that. That, simply add fifteen hundred dollars to any of those prices and by the way pricing for 2023 is a relatively average 955 dollar bump from the previous model year all of them for every manufacturer are going up right now thanks to inflation of course but Anyways, regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Tiguan is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 184 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 221 pound feet of torque, coming in at 1,600 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.1 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 22 city, 29 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration or anything like that in the Tiguan, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. So there is a circular dial located directly behind the shifter, which will give you both on-road and off-road drive modes. So the way that works is the on-road drive modes, you're gonna simply just press the button in the middle of the circular dial. For the off-road drive modes, you're gonna turn this dial to the left and to the right. That's how you adjust them. But they're going to include normal, sport, eco, and individual. But then the off-road drive modes are gonna include snow and a couple off-road modes as well, ultimately adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, climate control settings, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. It's so actually quite a bit, a little bit more than most other manufacturers. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press that center button there. I'm going to put it in sport driving mode. Let's put this thing here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan here up to speed. Keep in mind, it is raining out. So let's see. All right, in three, two, one, kick it. No slipping. Yeah, that's not bad. We're going uphill too, but yeah, that'll definitely get the job done actually. that That's not horrible. I mean, it's not the quickest thing in the world. Zero to 60 in 8.1 seconds is certainly not by any means fast, but like I said, that'll be enough to get you merged onto the highway or anything like that. Quite honestly, I personally wouldn't have any issues with that acceleration, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 easy or stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 126 feet, which is kind of a little bit below average as far as that stopping stopping distance goes but as far as braking feel goes i think i said this last year it's on the firmer side of things so the braking feel itself feels really really nice quite honestly so for that reason for me the number doesn't matter as much as the braking feel itself and the braking feel is quite good actually in the tiguan so i'm just going to throw the number aside because it's according to motor trim by the way so the braking feel is brilliant. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you will find the McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. So as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine on my short test drive here today, but uh, Hanover roads are pretty bad as well. So honestly, it's not that bad. So I don't have any issues, but I will say the steering feel adjusts substantially dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So I'm gonna put it in sport again, and it does change the gauge color as well. I'll show you guys the digital gauges in a little bit, but it is a much heavier weight to the steering that I love in that sport driving mode. But the second you take it out of sport driving mode, put it in eco or normal, it is 
so loose, such a loose steering feel, not a whole lot of driver feedback. So another cool thing though about the drive modes is there is that individual driving mode. So I could choose to configure it to that heavier steering feel without the instant acceleration all the time, which is probably what I would do if I were to get the Tiguan because the heavier steering feel is wonderful in the Tiguan. So I'll just leave it at that. But then touching on cabin noise, we are going 40 miles per hour right now. Quite honestly, cabin noise really isn't all that bad. Get a little bit of rain noise right now because uh, it's raining out, but other than that, it's pretty nice. Then touching on visibility, I can see pretty darn good out the back. And uh, this second row headrest are, are not horrible. And this is a smaller SUV, so you really shouldn't have any issues with rear visibility. But did want to also mention though, rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the SE trim level and up. So that is pretty darn cool. So on days like today, essentially whenever the Tiguan detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about. So little convenience feature there as well. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan with the lake in the background looks absolutely amazing. I love this spot. But anyways, platinum gray metallic is the name of our exterior color, in case you were curious. And taking a look at the VIN, just to cover where it's made real quick, the VIN starts with a three, meaning this one is built and assembled in Mexico, in case you were curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. This one was recently refreshed for the 2022 model year. So as far as exterior looks go, uh, pretty much everything is carried over from that model year. Illuminated front grille though, coming with the SEL R-Line trim level, uh, not the black that we have today the sel not the se so didn't want to mention that one more trim level up and we would have got that so that's pretty cool our logo found at the front grill though you guys could see that'll get a little bit up close so you guys can uh take a look at that kind of on the passenger side up front there so that definitely looks pretty good and that's going to come on both our line trim levels of course you do get some gloss black accents for the r line black that we have with us here today so that definitely looks good as well. To the sides, LED headlights do come standard with LED daytime running lights. That's gonna come for all trim levels, by the way. Gotta like that. Automatic headlights, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But you also get adaptive front lighting for the SEL R-Line trim level. So essentially what that is, is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend. So you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a cyclist or whatever. So that is a pretty darn cool little feature there as well. Most vehicles don't have that. So big fan. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Tiguan. So now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now starting up top, roof rails are going to come standard for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that. Taking a look at the window surrounds, they're either going to be finished in chrome or black, depending upon the trim level that you go with, of course. You do get some R accents found on the front fender there. That is pretty cool. And that's, of course, going to come with the R line trim levels there. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are either going to be body colored or gloss black side mirrors, again, depending upon the trim level that you go with we got the gloss black of course because of the uh ser line black trim level here they will be heated though for all trim levels across the board and you will also get led integrated turn signals as well so that is pretty cool take a look at the side skirts because this is always one of my pet peeves uh matte black side skirts are going to come with the non r line trim levels and that's going to be matte black fender surrounds as well but if you go with one of those two r line trim levels you will actually get body colored side skirts and that of course is what you guys are looking at right now and it looks dang good love the side profile here just because of the side skirts i know it sounds weird but anyways and take a look at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys for the s 18 inch alloys for the se 19 inch alloys for the se r line black and lastly 20 inch alloys then for the sel r line so wheel configuration is going to differ in size based off the trim level so interesting but anyways so I'll go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back you will find a gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top there just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper LED taillights though coming standard for every single trim level across the board. Gotta absolutely love that. Got the Tiguan lettering spelled out horizontally of course, but scrolling all the way to the bottom here, you will find some fake exhaust outlets, kind of a, they're like cutouts where you would think the exhaust would be, but the real exhaust outlets are actually tucked away underneath i'm not going to get any lower here because it is super wet and messy here but anyways they are tucked underneath so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All 
All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Tiguan, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate for the SEL R-Line trim level, so only the very top trim, but power tailgate is gonna be available for all of the other trim levels, although we don't have it today because it is a manual lift gate otherwise, so that's what we got. But anyways, once opened up, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is an available third row. We don't have it today, but again, it is available. Behind that third row, cargo capacity comes in at 12 cubic feet. Behind the second row, 33 cubic feet. And with all rows folded for the three row configuration, 65.3 cubic feet. And you notice I emphasize that because if you go with the two row configuration, you actually get a little bit more cargo capacity coming in at 73.4 cubic feet. So about eight cubic feet more with the two row configuration, which is what we have today. So I did want to mention that. But anyways, a lot going on in the cargo area, which I was a big fan of. LED cargo lighting. You typically find halogen lighting back there. You also get a cargo cover. There's plenty of grocery bag hooks. There's a little bit of storage found in the uh, two corners back there. There is a 12 volt power outlet to my surprise as well. That was pretty cool. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire with a little bit of kind of storage around that spare tire. So you could probably put an ice scraper back there if you live in Pennsylvania like myself here. But anyways, then making our way up to the rear leg room in the third row, I'm just going to come in at 27. 7.9 inches, which by the way is a little bit less than my old Ford Mustang GT. So didn't want to mention it's probably not going to be all that usable, but second row legroom comes in at 38.7 inches, which is plenty usable for reference. I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. There is a uh, phone charging port back there, a 12 volt power outlet. If you go with the SE trim level and up, there is also a rear center armrest with cup holders for those rear passengers then as well. And there's actually a couple coat hooks back there, which is always convenient. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the S, eight-way power driver seat with four-way power lumbar for the SE trim level and up. You will get VTEX leatherette seating for the SE trim level and up, heated seats coming standard for all trim levels across the board, ventilated front seats then coming on the SELR line. And so overall, when it comes to seat comfort, honestly wasn't that bad. I personally didn't have any issues, so definitely plenty adjustable power lumbar as well. And again, the heated seats on this cold day here in Pennsylvania, I was definitely a big fan of them. I'll just put it that way. Then take a look at the steering wheel. This is one of the things I love and don't love about the Tiguan, and here's why. So it is tilt and telescoping, but it doesn't telescope out all that far. So I'm not a fan of it for that reason because if you're a taller adult, like I said, I'm six foot tall, you therefore have a little bit longer legs. So you have to put your seat back more. So if the steering wheel doesn't telescope out as far, it doesn't give you that perfect driving position necessarily. So I wouldn't have minded if Volkswagen allowed it to telescope out a little bit farther for taller adults. Again, if you're not that tall, this is going to be perfect for you. I'll just put it that way. But leatherette wrapped for the SE trim level and then leather wrapped for the R-Line trims. I love that. I love the flat bottom to it here in our R-Line trim level and the little R insignia, but I really love the kind of perforated steering wheel on the left and the right and the 10 and 2 grips are massive, almost BMW M-like. So I'm a huge fan, huge fan of the grips on this steering wheel. Volkswagen did a wonderful job with them. But anyways, then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Volkswagen logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear tailgate there or unlock it in our case. Times two button is gonna be your remote start, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start here. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that silver engine start button, which for whatever reason is tilted slightly to the right. That is awkward. Why did they do that? Once started up, gauge cluster, there's gonna be two of them actually. So you get an eight inch digital gauge cluster coming standard for all trim levels, but that top trim, the SEL, because that one is gonna give you a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster. But either way, they look dang cool, I will say that. And like I mentioned earlier, they do adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if you were to put it in the sport driving mode, everything is going to turn red. If you were to put it in eco, it's gonna kind of turn like a cyan color, and then normal is gonna be a royal blue. So they will adjust slightly dependent upon the drive mode. I think that's pretty cool, but basically, digital gauges look absolutely wonderful. You can also press the view button on the steering wheel itself that will completely change the look of those gauges up there as well. So again, I don't think Volkswagen can get a whole heck of a lot better at this price range for what they're giving you with the digital gauges. So it looks absolutely wonderful. You got how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature. The list goes on, everything you could possibly want up there basically. Then taking a look at overall interior quality, there is a 
panoramic sunroof for the R-Line trim levels. That's what you guys are looking at right now. I love that. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls are going to be available. And that's a frameless rear view mirror with a compass in the upper right hand corner as well. That's what you guys are looking at again. I love that as well. 15 colors of ambient lighting are going to come on the R-Line trim levels. Big fan there. Dual zone climate control is going to come standard wireless phone charger coming with the SE trim level and up. And that's going to be located directly in front of the shifter with a rubberized bottom. So big fan of that. Illuminated door sills then coming with the R-Line trim levels. Gotta love that as well. It's also a little bit of rubberized storage found just above the upper air vents here. I was a big fan of that. So you can put something there so it doesn't slide around. I like the white contrast stitching found on the doors. There's kind of this carbon fiber look as well that continues just above the passenger side glove box. That's very nice. Just in front of the shifter, you have a 12 volt power outlet, couple phone charging ports. To the left of the shifter, you got your electromechanical parking brake. Behind the shifter, you got dual cup holders, a little bit of storage there. And within the center armrest, a eh, little bit of storage there. It is pretty deep storage, but it's not all that big. But anyways, now making our way to the infotainment screen, there is a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the S, then an eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE trim level and up. That's what you guys are looking at, of course, right now. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. But if you were to go with that eight inch screen, you actually get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Play. The majority of manufacturers of vehicles out there still aren't offering wireless Android Auto. Most of them are getting wireless Apple CarPlay now, but not the Android Auto. And I got my Android phone, so I love that. So big fan. But anyways, factory navigation system coming with the SEL R-Line trim level. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so the standard sound system is going to be six speakers. But if you were to go with that top trim, the SEL R-Line, you're going to get a nine speaker Fender sound system. So that, of course, is not the one we have today. We do have the six-speaker sound system, so what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's honestly not bad. Now, not a whole lot of bass, but the clarity was actually better than I expected for a six-speaker sound system. So, quite honestly, it's not horrible. I don't mind that. If you wanted a better sound system, you got it with the SEL. So, anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is... When you do put the Tiguan in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, so that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming on the SE trim level and up. So this isn't going to come on the S, but SC trim level and up is going to give you forward collision mitigation system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, and then lane keep assist as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Tiguan, the fact that ambient lighting is offered, I love that at this price point. Digital gauges, they did a wonderful job with them. Not only do they change colors, but you can completely change the look of them as well. So well done Volkswagen there. Wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, of course, but that's something you typically don't find on other manufacturers right now as well. So big fan of that. As far as room for improvement goes, there are some hard plastics found right around the shifter. So not a huge fan of that, but it's kind of to be expected for this price point, quite honestly. And the only other thing I can think of is that the steering wheel doesn't telescope out as I personally would want it to being a taller adult, I guess you could say. So that's all I could say. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Tiguan in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social Social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold